about world players. In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force-field particle research, autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was a dome, a huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the mines and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the big empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question. Then they did the beginning of that um, beginning. Anyways. 
How can you talk to a toaster? I have a feeling that I'm yeah, I just have a feeling that I'm gonna need to use guns.
little teddy bear toes. Fetuses are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. But I don't recall a human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static. These lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. Dr. Klein, wait. I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Age, have you been in the Mentats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are. As usual, Lobotomite, do you understand me? Can you speak? Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. He's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. In plain God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled the skin up with awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait. If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us. Then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein, our transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my own colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain, Big Fools, oh, it is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is, yes, forbidden to you. Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and Kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do?